How Odin Lost His Aunt, as retold by Catherine F. Selim. Once the world was still very young, Odin sat on his throne in the most beautiful palace in Asgard. His throne was so high that he could see over all three parts of the world from where he sat. On his head, he wore a helmet shaped like an eagle. On his shoulder, perched two black ribbons called Memory and Thought, and at his feet crouched two snarling wolves. The great king gazed thoughtfully down to the earth below him. He had made the green land that stretched out before his eyes. With the help of the other gods, he had made men and women who live on that earth, and he felt truly like the old father he was called. The fair elves had promised they would help his children of the earth. The elves were tiny people who lived between heaven and earth. They were so small that they flit about doing their work unseen. Odin knew that they were the artists who painted the flowers and made the beds for the strips. They took care of all the bees and butterflies. And it was the elves that brought the gentle rain and sunshine to the earth. Even the ugly dwarves who live in the heart of mountains agreed to help. They forged iron and metals, made tools and weapons. They dug gold and silver and beautiful jewels out of the earth. Sometimes they even cut the grain and ground the flour for the farmers on the earth. All seemed to be going well. Odin found it hard to think of evil times, but he knew that the first giants were only waiting for the chance to bring trouble to his children. They were the ones who brought cold and ice to the world and struck the earth in anger. They hated Odin and all the works of the gods. And from high on his throne, Odin looked down beyond the earth, deep into the gloomy land of his enemies. He saw dark figures of huge men moving about. They looked like evil shadows. He, the king of gods, needs to have more wisdom. It was not enough just to see his enemies. He ought to know more about them. So Odin wrapped his tall figure in a blue cloak. Down from his throne, he climbed down the broad rainbow bridge. Throwed them across the green earth till he came to the one of the roots of the great evergreen tree. Close by the tree was a well full of clear water. Its surface was so still it was like a mirror, and it one could see pictures of things that had happened and things that were going to happen. But beside the well sat an old man. His face was lined with the troubles of the world. His name was Mimir, which means memory. No one, not even the great Odin, could see the pictures in the well, unless he first drank some of its water. Only Mimir could give the magic drink. Aged Mimir, Odin said to the old man, You who hold the knowledge of the past and the future in your magic waters, let me have but one sip. Then I can know enough to protect the men and women of the earth from the hate of the giants. Mimir looked kindly at Odin, but he did not smile. Although he spoke softly, his voice was so deep. It reminded Odin of the distant roar of the ocean. The price of wandering from this well is not cheap. Mimir said, and once you have drunk and gazed into the mirror of life, you may wish you had not. For sorrow and death as well as joy are pictured there. So you should think again before you ask to drink. But once the king of the gods had made up his mind, nothing could change it. He was not afraid to look upon sorrow and death. What is your price, Agent Mimir? Odin asked. 
You are great and good, Odin, answered Mimir. You have worked hard to make the world. Only those who know hard work may drink from my well. However, that is not enough. What have you given up that is very dear to you? What have you sacrificed? The price of a drink must be a great sacrifice. Are you still willing to pay the price? What could the king of the gods sacrifice? What was the most dear to him? Odin thought of his handsome son, Baldr, whom he loved most in the world. To give up his son would be like giving up life and all that was wonderful around him. Odin stood silent before Mimir. Indeed, that would be a high price. Then Mimir spoke again. He had read Odin's thoughts. No, I am not asking for your dear son. The fates say his life must be short, but he has time yet to live and bring happiness to the gods and the world. I ask for one of your eyes. Odin put his hands up to his bright blue eyes. Those two eyes had gazed across the world from his high throne in the shining city of the gods. His eyes had taught him what was good and beautiful, what was evil and ugly. But those eyes had also seen his children, the man and woman of the earth, struggling against the hate of the giants. One eye was a small sacrifice to win knowledge of how to help them. And without another thought, Odin plucked out one of his blue eyes and handed it to Mimir. Then Mimir smiled and gave Odin a horn full of the waters of his well. Drink deeply, brave king, so you may see all that you wish in the mirror of life. Odin lifted the horn to his lips and drank. Then he knelt by the edge of the well and watched the pitchers passing across its still and silent surface. When he stood up again, he sighed, for it was as Mimir had said. He had seen sorrow and death as well as joy. It was only the glorious promise at the end that gave him courage to go on. So Odin, the great king of the gods, became one-eyed. If you can find Mimir's well, you will see Odin's blue eye resting at the bottom. It is there to remind men and women of the great sacrifice he made for them.